14 in-game years. Over one month of daily episodes, 32 episodes in total. At long last, we get to bring back the man himself. Arcadius. A colony legend. Almost a channel legend at this point. A man who had a thousand children and without whom it's fair to say this colony wouldn't be what it is today. Now I thought it was a great time to do this. Before we resurrect Arcadius, I want to go through all the characters. I want to do a little bit of a recap because I saw a comment yesterday from somebody who said it's kind of difficult to keep up with who is in the colony, who's alive, who's died, and more importantly, who they are as characters. And to be honest, I get it. Even when I'm playing Remote Series not to record, I find it difficult, especially kind of late into a campaign, to keep up with just who I've got. You generally take people on because they're good at like a particular skill, but outside of that, they don't do anything defining. So I'll put a timestamp up on screen now if you want to skip over this. I want to spend a couple of minutes going through all of our colonists now that we're at a fairly late stage of the game and just kind of catching up on stuff that I might have missed with, say, editing or just going through things a little bit of a faster pace. So we'll only really touch on bio, health very briefly, social relations, that type of thing, who they are, not what they are. I'll start with the youngest member of the colony and work backwards and hope that nobody dies of a heart attack while I do it. Our first character is Crow Cuba Vivin Gravy Plasma. <laughs> Nine years of age, adaptive eyes, vengeful, and they are an avian, 16 melee, and eight medical. Their father is Captain Cuba Vivin Gravy Plasma, and their mother is Penny Vivin Gravy Plasma. It is probably a little redundant me to point it out, but they are a descendant of every house. Grandparents from House Pepistasius, Sabat, uh, eventually, if you trace it back far enough as well, Dimos. That's a bit redundant to point out for every character, so just, it's it's fairly safe to assume that going ahead with everyone. Then we have Corrupt the Second Chickeny Pank Dimos, 22 years of age, undergrounder, beautiful wimp, 50 melee and 11 mining double passion. Daughter of Arcadius the Second Chickeny Pank Dimos and Avion Pepper Stasius. We have the very important Brigadier Lebowski the Second Chickeny Pank Dimos, current Arcadian Patriarch, well, I suppose for at least the time being anyway. Mountain lover and super immune, 22 years of age. Very good at melee, a little bit of mining, a little bit of medical in there too. Child of Arcadius II, Second Chickeny Pank Damos, and Avion as well. We then have Smelly Bont Sabat, 26-year-old Stormcaster, hard worker, and sanguine. Massive melee stats, pretty good at intellectual, but a little bit of medical there too. Daughter of Shotgun Diplomacy and Snowdog. And this character, for whatever reason, permanently has a pair of underwear on their head. So I'm going to call you Underwear Face. As a side note, I would love to do more titles for everybody. Whenever they do anything of, of, of some importance or note to the colony, we'll, we'll try and get that in. Just so it's a little easier to keep track of some people. We then have our most recent non-horribly inbred character, Gary Doodlesack. 28 years of age, groundbreaker misogynist tycoon and brawler 11 melee mining single passion crafting and social as well that's worth mentioning best friends with uwu pepper stasis but currently no relationships dang Li wang age 34 our second most recent recruit squeamish cat person vengeful gourmand 20 melee double passion pretty good at cooking and medical as well no relationships once again i think everybody's more or less spoken for at this point very good friends with ohm though plus 100 opinion susamu pepper stasius 38 years of age super immune adaptive eyes stormcaster wimp and pretty massive melee and massive medical wife of fendeldor pepper stasius and daughter of cuddles pepper stasius and cobalt pepper stasius Grandmother is Anfisa Sabat, someone we've still got alive. Another fairly key character, Captain Cuba Vivin Gravy Plasma, age 40. Super immune, technophobe, and beautiful. 16 melee, and pretty good mining, medical, but again, nothing massively noteworthy. Oh shit, am I, am I interrupting something here? Wife of Penny Vivin Gravy Plasma, and father of Crow Cuba Vivin Gravy Plasma, child of Taco Cat and Surviving. Uwu Pepper Stasius, 43 years of age, incredible melee and medical once again. Undergrounder, heavy sleeper, and pretty. Wife of Toy Boy Roy Pepper Stasius, best friends with Gary Doodlesack as well, and daughter of Arcadius II, Chickeny Pank Dimos, and daughter of Ciala as well. Probably kind of up there in the whole inbreeding coefficient race. Avion Pepper Stasius, age 44, melee of 23 and medical of 20 as well. Super immune, adaptive eyes, stormcaster and wimp. Widow of Arcadius the second chicken, Epank Dimos and daughter of Cuddles and Cobalt. We have Toy Boy Roy, the 45 year old, holy crap this guy's stats. The 45 year old, super immune, adaptive eyes, beautiful 
Man with 25 melee, 11 mining double passion, crafting of 15 single passion, a medical of 26 double passion. Husband of Uwu Pepistasius and child of, once again, Cuddles and Cobalt. And the current Pepistasius patriarch too, someone actually worthy of that title. We then have the very questionably haired shotgun diplomacy bonds about age 47, massive melee at 24 and very good medical at 18 as well. Psychically deaf, jealous and ascetic. Wife of Snowdog Bon, or I should say widow, of course, of Snowdog Bon Sabat and daughter of Cobalt and Taco Cat. Penny Vivin Gravy Plasma, age 61. Very good mele melee and medical. I'm sensing a weird trend here. Ocean Lover and Slowpoke. Wife to Captain Cuba Vivin Gravy Plasma, if you couldn't tell. Best friends with Hezron Sabat and daughter of Cuddles and Cobalt. And then the man himself, Hezron Sabat, age 63. Very high melee and medical. Cannibal, beautiful, and kind. Best friends with Penny. Son of Dawn Bonsabat and Bone Crusher Jones. We're getting up there to all of our old people now. Fendeldor Pepper Stasius, age of 71, 16, melee. Good crafting, artistic, and medical as well. Chemical fascination, pyromaniac, trigger happy, and affected by Zer's corruption. Wife of Susumu Pepistasius. And friends with Strupa Zanome, but unfortunately no children for Fendeldorp. And then we have a man so good we named him twice. Bons, Bons, Sabat, Sabat, Patriarch, 18 melee, 17 mining, 19 cooking, and pretty good intellectual to boot. Adaptivized, Stormcaster, Optimist, Ascetic, and Pretty. Maybe takes the prize for the most traits as well. Widower of Dawn Bont Sabat, but currently married to Keg Denter Bont Sabat. Child of Billy Bont and Anfisa. Then we have Cuddles Pepper Stasius, age 120. 18 melee, 12 mining, 12 cooking, 13 plants, 21 crafting. Be a pretty massive loss when we lose Cuddles. Super immune Stormcaster, industrious, ocean lover, prude, and pretty as well. Widower of Cobalt Pepper Stasius, mother to a whole bunch of people and daughter of Anfisa and Billy Bonts. Keg Denter Bonts about age 122. Apparently also a rim or child. 19 melee, 11 mining, desensitized, ascetic, and pretty. Daughter of fatigable and bare minimum. Wow, we're going back quite a long way at this point. And mother and uh, a grand aunt of Snowdog. And then the oldest of all the colonists born into the colony, Anfisa Sabat, age 174. 30 cooking, double passion. Wow. 15 medical, 11 plants, and 14 mining boots. Super immune, adaptivized, submissive, ascetic, and stormcaster. Widow of Billy Bon Sabat, and best friends with Susamu, her grandson. Oh, that's quite nice. You have well earned the title of Master Chef. I did almost write Master Chief then. Then, the founders of this entire colony, all the way back to episode. One over a month ago now, we have Struppers, the resurrected. 290 years of age, 16 melee, 23 construction, 11 mining, 13 plants, and 17 social. Super immune, industrious, fisherman, ascetic, clumsy, and beautiful. You win the award for most traits because those are the non race specific traits as well. Wife of our other OG character, Om. Friends with Cuddles and Fendeldorp and the Brig Lebowski. And then finally, the big man himself, Ohm, age 449. Just assume all of his skills are good. 48 melee, 50 construction being the ones most notably there. Psychically hypersensitive, transcendent reflexes, kind, tough, blessing of Zer, super immune, and beautiful. Wife of Strupers, best friend of Arcadius the Second Chicken, Epank, Dimos, previous lover to Dawn, friends with the Brig Lebowski, Cuddles, Toy Boy Roy, Hezron, and Penny. I'm I'm in some ways pretty glad Ohm was able to even if it was purely an accident, was cured of his injury, because he actually has become a really key member. I mean, obviously, he was a key member to the colony, but socially now, he's such a key member to the colony. Marrying the other original character after we resurrected her and becoming best friends with one of the most important figures of the entire dynasty is uh, pretty high tier. And that's some immersive storytelling right there. Now that that's out of the way, on to the main event. Toy Boy Roy, thank you for delivering the medicine. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're not important enough. He is the patriarch of House Pepper Stasius, but he's not like, you know, he's not like that important. Not compared to say, oh, I don't know, Ohm. What the hell? Struppers and Brig Lebowski are arguing. Your eldest ancestors be damned. Brig Lebowski, 
uh, coming out with straight up racism. Please, Arcadius wouldn't want this. Ah. Oh. Those, uh, those moats don't seem too awe-inspiring. Did we fuck it up? <gasps> Arcadius Dimos, he's back. Super immune, iron stomach, beautiful slob. Slob, kind, and snob. Ha okay, Arcadius himself. Does that show up as... Oh my god, it is Arcadius. Oh, look at this social list. Do these people show up as kin? Are they that far related at this point? They only count as acquaintances. I mean, they are very distant kin. This is, uh, uh well, actually, we can probably try and work it out. Well, assuming the family tree makes on Discord are right, Arcadius, new Arc well, Arcadius remastered, is the great, 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 great grandfather of Brig Lebowski. Arcadius is someone's hanky pank, hanky pank, someone's her herky jerky. Herky Jerky, son was Octavius. Octavius' son was the chicken, whose son was Arcadius II, whose son was Brig Lebowski. Wow. At least I have human ancestors, you filthy spawn of worms. He's literally right there. Attended wedding? Kind words? Wait, no way does he remember. Was that the last thing he remembered? Attending someone's wedding? Log? Show all? Oh, it's not there. But he's still got that memory. I wonder whose wedding that was. <laughs> that would be so long ago. Now, I've seen the many messages and the many comments about justice for Lyra, the murdered colonist who was killed in cold blood. I've seen messages about Romulus, about Amaya as well. All of these characters have had various different requests for resurrection. But from a purely meta perspective, we do have to... We do have to temper the resurrections a little bit. They're very overpowered anyway in base game reward. Not to mention in a mod pack where we can build as many as we like from whatever resources we happen to mine up whenever we want. So as I said before, just to keep things somewhat balanced, let's not pretend they're balanced, but, but at least a little bit more in the balanced direction, any characters who die in battle or of old age, we aren't going to resurrect. However... This one I can't ignore because there have been so many comments about it. And that person unsurprisingly, is Siala. So I will bow to the will of the people, and we will bring back as our final resurrected colonist, Siala. After that point, the old resurrect mech serums are gone. And instead, if we want to resurrect anyone or anything, we should use the altered carbon resurrection because it is, it's still not balanced, but it is far more balanced. And more importantly, it's far more cool. Actually being forced to grow a body that you then implant uh, uh, essentially a data disk of their mind into is way more interactive and way more impressive than just going, you know, bonk with a resurrect serum. And also, to be fair, Siala didn't exactly die in the most impressive way. I think after looking into it, I realized that her helmet broke and that's why her head was blown off or something like that. I remember it not being super impressive either way. Now, we already have the final Resurrected Mech Serum left to go, but I am going to take this off of the crafting menu going forward. So first, the DNA Reconstructor, and then the Resurrector. And to be honest, I'll also take this because of the amount of times we tried to resurrect people with Omo need to be sorely, sorely disappointed. There she is. At this point, I'm not sure who's going to be more confused. Arcadius, that there's an entire church and cathedral built around him. Not to mention his family members are everywhere. Or Siala about the fact that her 300 year long dead husband is up and walking around and even more muscular than before really does make you think does he remember Siala? more importantly oh there's nothing whoa does she remember arcadius no that is ah oh, arcadius she does remember him and look it's it's actually the same arcadius he doesn't say dead anymore wow ex-lover because he literally was her lover at one point and then horribly died, not in the fact that they, like, broke up or anything. What on earth are you talking about? The bestower that I cast of Amontillado, does someone put it in Discord yesterday, is happy? Gorgeous environment. This place is beautiful. It lifts me up and makes me love life. Oh, well, that's not right. Rather than doing something sensible, like, say, preparing weapons and armor that are more era-specific for when we fight Ultratech enemies, Void could quite literally turn up at any second now. Our top priority is preparing Mansion Arcadius once again. Oh, no. I spoke too soon. Okay, that's not Void. The Chaser Armada. A group of galaxy warriors? 
A group of fucking what now? Hello? Uh, what the hell is even that? Chaser Armada. Why do I recognize that? Chaser Armada. Polaris block mech enemy. Are they particularly powerful? Uh, they don't seem too terrible. Oh, no. Oh, no. They seem pretty terrible. Melee dodge chance plus story. We're doomed. It's over. Arcadius was born too late to experience the medieval era, but was born just in time to be wiped out by a bunch of coked up space pirates. Luckily enough, none landed inside the walls. Why are you glowing? Oh, my God. Look at them. Is that Thor? Oh, my God. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is an ultra tech. This is Arco tech. Um, ah! <laughs> well, hello there. I don't even know what that is. Bastion. That's a unit, not a building. Okay. Well, this is, yeah, this is something probably worth mentioning now. I did a little bit of work behind the scenes. And the good news is I seem to have fixed the problem where we we're only getting mechanoid and insect raids. The bad news is I think I fixed it a little bit too well. Is this what we should have been fighting since the start? Oh, God, our people are trapped outside the walls. The worst part is the sandbags aren't built yet. They're built where it matters. That's the important part. What the hell was that noise? <gasps> They've got bloody sidecast too. What have they got? Hall skip, flash heal, water skip. Stun. They've got all the barnacks of the Arco factions. The weaponry and armor of, say, the commandos. It's certainly around the equivalent. Oh, I don't know about the weapons, but the armor for sure. And they've also got the bloody sidecasts of the elders faction. Well, this is going to be a right laugh. Are we able to look at them dodging? Holy crap. Dodging and parrying so much. Ohm, blow them up. Blow them up, Ohm. Wow, I've never seen these guys before. This is, uh, this is quite cool. Luckily, there weren't many of them, right? That's, uh, that's not okay. That's, uh, that's not okay right there, Lars dude. Get him, Penny. Get him, Penny. Cuddles, cut him off. Slice and dice. What the hell have you got equipped? Chase a shield belt. Wowee. What a, what a weird faction. Wow. These guys are quite cool. And the best part is, after this, we've got Mechanoids to deal with. Go and help out. Holy crap. I mean, a big enough raid from these guys could be could be pretty interesting. Well, that's half the battle. Oh my god, they've walked right into the mechanoids and they're fighting the clockwork bear. Brilliant. What is that? We've got two capsules, three beacons. We've got five assemblers, pikemen, flamebots, scythers, flamebots, and scullywags. I want to know what the hell this thing is. Giant war machine. Move with caterpillar band. Do mid-range suppression fire. Whoa. It's got a composite rocket launcher as its weapon. Hello there. <laughs> Hello. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Holy crap. If these guys come with a raid. If these guys turn up with a sizable raid, we could be in a lot of trouble. Look at them dodge. One on one evidently will be fine. But the fact that raiders can obviously spawn in with up to 50 people at a time and then they start compressing down. And becoming even stronger? That could be a bit of a concern. This is good, though. It's nice to be able to test out some of these crazy weapons and armor we've committed so much time and effort to. And Fiza, fuck off. Oh, Arcadius is here. Arcadius, you don't have a weapon. Come back later. Okay, squad. Let's go all in on this thing. They're tanky, but at the, at the end of the day, they are just still mechanoids. Oh, fuck. Uh, maybe you guys... Maybe you guys leave. How about that? Oh, yikes. Oh, yikes. Okay. Big Lebowski, this one's down to you, my friend. The man's leading the charge. What a play. Yeah, Mechanoid Raids are uh, still piss weak, even with all these enemies. Very nice. First raid was a bit of a clusterfuck because our people were out in the field a little bit, but that wasn't too terrible. So my immediate and only concern is resurrected Arcadius. Arcadius remastered. Still counts as an empty sleeve and doesn't have... Any skills available? Do you need the brain templates to allow them to do things? Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, his closest living relative that counts is... What the f fuck? Is kegged into Bon Sabat. Sorry, I got a little distracted because I kind of noticed it says by the chicken e Pank Dimos that he is a hostile warborn cultist. He was kidnapped. Are you telling me that the chickeny pank Dimos was recruited 
by the Warborn cultist. Because that just about might be the coolest thing I've ever heard in RimWorld. Who are the Warborn cultists, though? Okay, well, let's see if we can figure out what the hell is going on here. <laughs> Look at all these freaking factions. So we've got a medieval society. Medieval society, medieval warband, Slayer's Desert. There we are. So it's those guys. There's us. We obviously count as uh, <laughs> new primitives in brackets. Ultra, yeah, close enough. So bizarrely enough, even the commanders, I think, are the most deadly. Where's Void? Uh. Do Void not count? A Void so edgy and cool that they don't even show up on the bloody faction list. They are on the map, though. They're right there. Right next to the Empire and the landed ship. Brilliant place to set up shop. So Slayer's Desert is down here near Purple Chicken Shore. How very appropriate. I've somehow mastered the art of building things both phallic and unflattering. I guess it's a cold day in House Arcadius. <laughs> and I really should add to the 5th of Jugus. The return of St. Arcadius. My god, he's going to be confused on St. Arcadius's day. I've never had a single character trapped in a box for quite as long as this before. And it's... Very Blair Witch, isn't it? Wow. Well, on the plus side, we've had some pretty huge progress from the Star Steel that we started yesterday. We've got another two Star Steel play armor to produce, but other than that, we're good. I do think weapons were probably a little more essential in hindsight. We're using adamantium, right? Which we've had since essentially the start of the industrial era. Whoa. Persona energy claws do 71 DPS, but only 36 armor penetration. Persona chain swords. Half the DPS of the energy claws. Ah! But they do have 70 armor penetration. Giving everyone a Persona Chainsword is fine. We just have to be very careful with it. Not only will it be obviously quite difficult to build, but if we get a chainsaw that's specifically suited to a single person, if they drop it or it goes into storage and someone else equips it, it's going to get... We we've got to micromanage 21 weapons at that point. I mean, an energy claw is almost a fist as well. What about a Star Steel Fragment Axe? Oh my god, another one. Well, I was just getting everybody re-equipped, so now was a pretty good time for that. Wow, that was fast. Void is really not pulling any punches this time. That's three already? Holy crap. <laughs> Auto mortars. Okay, fair enough. I really do still think that Ohm could probably take this by himself. I'm going to send Struppers. I need to know how powerful we are, and it's very difficult to gauge that when you've got just a bunch of people with weapons and army don't recognize... Hacking away at you, right? Mechanoids, I more or less know how they work. Not all of them, of course, going on right now, but we, we can we can figure this out. So we'll see how Struppers holds up against, well, this mess. Oh my god, the drop beacons, we're fine. Oh, my, 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 she's fine. Don't worry about her. She is taking a lot of hits, to be fair. Uh, let's just draft everybody else up, otherwise they're going to run over here if they're on a cord. Um, you can stand that. She's, she's down. Wow. Okay. Not as invincible as I anticipated then. What took you down? Uh, a, a whole bunch of stuff that I just do not recognize. Probably the composite rocket launcher if I had to guess. I mean, it's going to be a moving that's affected, right? Oh, 93% pain. Wow. Okay, yeah, that'll do it. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't expecting to be able to fight an entire mechano cluster with one person. That'd be ridiculous. Still the burn damage out of everything that's tripping us up. Someone pointed this out yesterday in the comments. We do have flame retardant skin as an option of a bionic. Fucking hell. It's those bastions. Whoa. I'm not really surprised. Yeah, I'm really not surprised. All right, then, little Arcadius. Let's see if you remember how to use that thing. With 4.44 uh, melee, I will admit, I'm not optimistic. Ohm, let's get around those mechanoids. Oh my god, Brick Lebowski is fighting them by himself. What a guy. They're providing great cover. ohm has got Struppers. He just loves killing mechanoids. I mean, at this point, original Arcadius is back to claim his title, right? Maybe Brig Lebowski could do what he loves doing best and just be one of our uh, primary combat characters. And I mean, look, he's got two crafting, but 14 melee. Okay. Well, this is certainly up the ante a little bit, hasn't it? Oh my god, Smelly is down. I'm bleeding out in five hours. He lost a leg. Once again, burn off. Burnt composite rocket launcher burn scar from these freaking pistols it's burn damage what we've learned well, it's exactly what i wanted to do was to try and find out where our weak point was and and i think we found it at this stage let's get toboy roy to stabilize smelly as fast as possible then we'll get you over to okay nice work let's get you back genuinely feeling the pressure a little bit here for the first time in a very very long time i think we were able to make it here uh was it flame yeah there we are flame retardant skin i assume it just gives a huge bonus to 
heat resist, right? Oh no, it's not heat armor. It sets the flammability down by 85%. It's actually only 20% heat armor. Interesting. We might be able to find something better than that then. I mean, the variable skin installation gives 10% heat armor and this armor specifically says that it's designed to dissipate heat. What about just a regular old skin gland of some variety? What the... <laughs> Thank you, crafting bot. Stone skin gland is 50% heat armor. It is better. All right, let's do it then. One for everybody. Might be a little bit overkill, but... I gave Arcadia Sen Sword of Rapture, but in hindsight, it feels a bit weird because he never actually used it originally. That was made by Octavius, right? Octavius Epangdimos. Got it. In that case, you know what? Let's give that back to uh, the Big Lebowski. The man has a passion for melee. And this sword has been in his family for hundreds of years. To give it back to Arcadius, someone who never used it in the first place, seems a bit weird. Arcadius instead gets this pretty poor legendary antimatter drill. <laughs> well, I thought I would try to see if it would work. I've given Ciala and Arcadius the same bedroom and neither of them are bothered. I know they are quote unquote ex lovers, but they really don't care about it. So I wonder if one of those mechanics is, is still working there somewhere. I mean, it's going to take them ages to get the stone skin glands done, right? So let's go for some weapons in the meantime. Hyper alloy synthesis would be pretty incredible. Worried that we haven't probably got a huge amount of antimatter left, given that I've turned it all into a very purple house for Arcadius. The man is the obsidian saint, after all, and I did have a look if we had any obsidian before I built this. What if it's on the drill? Can we just drill up obsidian? That would be, uh... No. Whatever. I've done it now. We'll just have to accept the fact that he's gonna have to put up with a unbelievably impressive house. I'll check laser weapons for the laser sword, or we can go for the like those uh Tesla wrist implants. I'm just gonna go for hyper alloy synthesis. We'll probably have to throw on the composite refiners again, and we might even have to turn off the reactor, or at least turn it down. If what if we turn it down? Minus one ninety one thousand excess. Ooh. Well I I mean I suppose minus ninety one thousand excess isn't technically wrong. We're we close to being able to build another plasma fusion reactor. Uh, we need eight beta poly. Oh, shit. Uh, do until... Okay, oh, we only need three more. Okay, that's fine. We can do that. I'm gonna take away the nuclear power plants. They have more or less the same footprint as the plasma fusion reactor. Uh, but like less than a tenth of the power production. Bloody hell, that was fast. So, to get these, we need the hyper components, which means we will need to get a raid from, uh, the ultra tech faction added by antimatter annihilation. So it's purely luck at that point, and I feel like purely luck is not the most viable way to make 21 weapons. Either way, I will throw down a couple of alloy fusion machines wherever we can fit them. I'd love to keep it all together. Uh, shit. I suppose if we take this away and put the actual particle accelerators here instead. What is that? A godlike crafter. This might be on the edge of insanity. Is this even safe? Well, let's give it a go. We don't need to test it. Just just plug it in. See what happens. Ah. The cuteness of a child. Oh, baby, you're so cute. Who is, um... Who is the baby? Are you talking about Crow? Uh, I'm not sure about that one. Okay, let's see. Okay, maybe he's remembering something from years ago. Yeah, he's quite clearly in a room by himself with a chess table in hindsight. I mean, look, there's a lot going on through this man's brain right now. Suffered a loss. We lost but can persevere. Fucking did we? <laughs> ah, did we suffer a loss? I mean, Strupers went down, but we suffered a loss. Did somebody... Somebody died? I feel like his brain is just completely fried at this point. The poor guy. Oh my god. A group of commandos from the crushers of fuck. <laughs> They're called the crushers of force, just to clarify. Uh, I was more fucking at the fact that they've landed right in the middle of the shitting base. Uh, okay, you know what? That might be the best thing they could have done. Because uh, the second they drop out of those pods, we can be we can be drilling them. <laughs> and Arcadius, I uh, knows a thing or two about... <sighs> you know. Okay, okay, okay. You go there. Uh, Brig Lebowski, you go there. Strupris, come here. Uh, you know what? Uwu could really do with some backup there. Nice. Holy shit, or not. Kill him. Kill him, team. What a fucking massacre. Wow. Uh, maybe get away from that. What the fuck, Hezron? After this, I'll kill your son. Well. 
I should teach him a lesson. Somebody needs treatment. Who was that? Uh, Brig Lebowski got hit. Was that really it? Hit by... These guys in melee are... Really not that good, huh? A survivor? Dumbo. 17-year-old lady. Staggeringly ugly. We can fix that. Jogger. Neat. Sickly. Sickly is a bit annoying. We can fix that too. Both of the things wrong with her, we can fix. Dr. Toyboy Roy, congratulations. You're getting promoted if you could capture Dumbo. Oh, cut off. What the hell did she get cut off? A leg. And a tibia has been shattered. Oh, she had a, an advanced barnic hand. Whoa. That's like one of the big advanced barnic hands. Those are the ones that give you yeah, the plus 100% manipulation. My God. Oh, I was just wondering where we got up to with the godly crafter. So these godly crafters, I assume we can swap out these auto assemblers for? If we do that, I mean, we're talking tons of resources, right? The pulse drills are limited in, in just how fast they are, but this will work as, I mean, as fast as it can work, right? Industrial, and then there we are. Godly cell crafter. Fuck me, that is expensive. 100,000 silver, five persona cores. Son of a bitch, I'm in. Ah, uh, this, this is unbelievable. Wow. It's so frequent. That isn't bad, though. I guess because we just had a raid. I'm going to send just home in for this one. We got too much stuff to do to be pissing around fighting mechanoids. <laughs> Not to mention that impact hammer is absurd. Are they? Are they damaging? Perhaps I'm underestimating these guys a little bit. Okay, let's um micro things a little bit more. Don't worry about the regular mechanoids. Let's kill this thing for a start. Oh, shit. Fucking hell. I will admit, it would be quite funny to see, I don't know, say, 23 impact hammers all going at once. They're so bloody tanky. That's insane. Well, that was a fucking showdown. Good lord. To get an infection too? Wow. Now, paradoxically, it's... <laughs> weird, weird to say this. It is somewhat balanced. Ohm has Arcotet limbs, some of the best limbs in the game. Not only that, he has the Transcendent Reflexes trait, which means his chance to dodge projectiles and parry projectiles is up massively. You're probably thinking, oh, well, it was burn damage, but it wasn't. It was actual gunshots. And if Ohm's our most overpowered character with traits and, and body parts and whatever else and a hammer made of materials that deflect incoming damage, if we'd have sent down like Stroopers or something like that, she would have been peppered. Not only that, but Ohm is wearing straight up legendary armor. Like the best armor we can possibly make right now. Shit, this is like very humbling today. We've gone from raids being a minor inconvenience to actually potentially being a real problem. And this is what you get for calling out Void. Now, I, I'm almost afraid to say it. Now what we need is regular Void to, to turn up because, well, I don't know. At this stage, I think we'd probably, I think we'd probably be fine against Void, to be honest. Uh, Dr. Toyboy Roy, I can't believe I'm saying these words, but... The home is actually in trouble. I mean, I don't think the infection will finish him off. I think he's going to be in trouble unless he gets in a friggin' hospital bed. Ohm has that cybernetic kidney, the really, really powerful blood set one with the 100% blood filtration, whatever else. He should, shouldn't should have to ever worry about infections. What was it that gave him that? Beta humanoid. Well, it's so nice to see they finally added YouTubers to RimWorld. <laughs> the kingdom of Armonla at this stage of the game? Entirely localized in... Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, this one is just an inconvenience. I'll tell you about what I said before. I mean, I kind of feel bad for them, though. Imagine rounding up 153 of you guys only to be called an inconvenience. Cake Densa, uh, where are your... Where are your clothes, though? I'm going to send Ohm up that way. Strooper is and the Brig Lebowski, I'm sure, can deal with these 85. Why are they not fighting back? This is bizarre. They're just... You're just walking away, eh? What are they... <laughs> <laughs> this is very strange. I mean, what were they thinking? What the hell were they thinking? Brig Lebowski is down? Hmm. I don't think this armor is as good as it's pretending to be. I mean, it is pretty... It's pretty good, but it's not like... It's not incredible. Damn, even Stroopress. I'm glad they're sending the reinforcements when I did. Siala has what? Was Ciala pregnant when she died? Gravy plasma? What the fuck? Mother of Ciala. 
And that's it. No father. What the f fuck? Male Vulcanian? With no father? This is some biblical level shit. <laughs> what? Just watch the video back and there's nothing. I don't, I don't understand. Where did this fucking baby come from? Well, I mean, Ciala, but that's not... Uh, <laughs> it's not the point. Brother is Crobe. I mean, yeah, that's fine, because these are all just Ciala's children. This is so weird. I, I have no idea. I've gone through the family tree trying to figure it out. I have no clue. On the subject of that, it should be working now, because I think I fixed it. Uh, yeah. No. Hang on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, good luck figuring that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Only connected to Ciala. I don't understand. Um, where where is it in here? I was thinking that maybe it's the child of Ciala and Arcadius the second. Okay, Ciala is there. Ciala, I need you to. You come here. Uh, there you are. No, it's only connected to Ciala, even with all of the dead connections taken into account. Well, until I can figure out who or what or how this baby is, I've decided to call it Magic Baby of. House Ciala because its name was Gravy Plasma, but it's not related to any Gravy Plasmas. It's only called that because Ciala was married to a member of House Gravy Plasma, so it took her last name. So to avoid any confusion there, I guess House Ciala is on the table. Oh, happy birthday, Fendeldorp. You now have the old age. I love that as soon as we get past the kind of medieval era religious aspects of the colony worshipping this this semi-mythical Arcadius figure building a big old church to him and celebrating him as a man who could control meteor turns out he was just a guy who had a lot of kids his ex-wife current wife I don't know the rules of that to be completely honest with you uh resurrected undead immortal wife gives birth to a magic baby with no father oh we just can't escape I guess thank you for watching it's been a very weird episode today because it's been a lot of recap, a lot of kind of going over what we've got, and then, of course, raid after raid after raid, thanks to Void. But I'm really, really glad that we've got to uh, a bit more... We've got a bit more Rimworld in our Rimworld, you know? There's a bit of threat. There's a little bit of actual contention in the colony now. Outside of just living in our luxury houses with our luxury base that does everything automatically for us, it's quite nice to get back to a bit more, a bit more threat. And we'll see how that goes. Hopefully Void fucks off at some point tomorrow. And we can actually make a little bit of uh, long-term progress. Huh? But until then, a big thank you, of course, goes out to the patrons for making this very weird episode possible in the first place. A big thank you to Andrew DeGaron, Emily, Chicken, Guardian Easter, Little Gump 19, Francisco, Galupo Fruit Hag, Passy965, Alchemia, Queen Bath Morda, Other Guy39, Juice Seda, and I am Sagatair. For their support, the executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Big thank you to you guys for making it all possible in the first place. A thank you as well to James, Shatner's Bassoon, Oyazan, Salsalor, Craigon, Monty, Aragon Awesome, Dairy Airy, Hyota123, Red Noah, Nia Ragupin, Cybermonkey, This Flex, and Sandy, who is.